commonly known as Nunu Orange, as uh, some of you may have read from my following on OurFigs.com, a great fig form that I strongly recommend if you have interest in figs. I think you have interest in figs if you watch my video, because I would love to show you an intro to my fig garden. A little bit about myself, uh, my name is Mike, I live in Connecticut, I've been involved with uh, fruit trees on wall for about, I want to say about six to eight years. I only started getting into figs about three years ago, and uh, I share a little bit of my drama on the message boards and my public service announcement. But if you have a few minutes, I'd love for you to join me, and I'd like to give you a little bit of tour of my fig garden. I call it my little fig forest, and we'll uh, give you a quick walkthrough. Thanks for joining, and I uh, hope you join me for my short tour. Come on, thanks. Okay guys, so this is what I call my little fig forest. I have uh, two zones here. I have zone one on the right, zone two on the left. And then in the way back over there, I have a third zone. Those zones will reference the drip irrigation system that I have these systems set up on. They're set up on a, a solenoid valve to automate a process to allow me to irrigate so many trees. I have roughly about uh, 200 varieties of trees. I have about 40 to 45 on each of these three zones, plus uh, individual ones that we will see a little bit later. But I just wanted to kind of show you my overview of some of these trees that I have. On the right hand side I have some of my older trees, roughly two to three years old, if not a little bit older. Um, I've gotten some as gifts that I, that I don't know the exact age, but they have some nice trunks on them. And these are all in about five to seven gallon sips. And some of them are a little bigger, like my red Libby in the back right there. That's a little bigger of a pot compared to these up front here. But these are all roughly in about uh, five to seven gallon sips. And I have them in sips because at one time before I put in the irrigation system, I wanted to make sure that the roots stayed hydrated appropriately. But now, as you can see on each one of these pots, they all have their own emitter that is variable. But by keeping the trees about the same age in the same zones, when I have my injection, uh, my fertilizer injection system feed with uh, the trees, they all get about the same type of fertilization. Compared to the ones here on our left, these are all my pots that are in about uh, one to two years old range of trees, and they all have the caps on them. Uh, some of the reasons I have the caps on them, one of the reasons is I was too lazy to take them all off. But I also wanted to capture some of those fertilizers instead of just running off, that the fertilizer was going to stay available. I am cautious about some of the salt buildups from the fertilizers drying out and then being rehydrated with more fertilizer and more fertilizer buildup. But I do hydrate with, uh, with without fertilizer from time to time. But some of the fertilizers I'm using are, are pretty organic. I, I love the fish emulsion by Alaska, I believe it's 511, is the concentration of fertilizer. But these are a bunch of my other trees, and they're just uh, they're just beautiful. I, I love them, love the hobby. You will see on all these trees the a lot of the air layers that I have up there. Those air layers are the way that I prune my trees. So it's not that I just go ahead and, and just say, hey, I want an air layer and get them up on figbid.com just because I want to sell trees. That's, I'm not in here to sell trees. I, I have a, a day job. I uh, actually have two day jobs. I'm in the military as a reservist, which is not one week in a month, two weeks a year, but ongoing uh, uh, progress as you as you climb the ranks. And then also I am uh, in the finance world at a, at a large bank, so I have a, a serious day job there. The primary, dri primary driver of me selling fig trees is more of a hobby and a little bit of OCD that if I'm going to do something, I like to do it well. So I, uh, I seem to go full out. But, um, you know, so I have those air layers on there, so that's, that's the way I air prune, uh, rather uh, prune my trees. And you know, some of the trees here are just beautiful. I love them, like this is my Panache. It's been very, very prolific. This season's been really weird, and you know, Panache's do handle the cold, but they don't fruit if uh, you don't have heat. And I really only get one Panache, if I'm lucky, maybe two, a summer. And this season, the way these things are going, not only has it been prolific, we've had a little bit of a shorter summer. I mean, our spring was very cold, then our summer ramped up to be pretty, pretty good. And it just took off. And these are, 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 are ripening, actually. I mean, well, besides from growing, the, I can kind of feel the softness. 
and the color on it. I don't know if you can recognize that color. It's a very, very prolific tree, very, very pretty. Figs everywhere on it. More figs, more figs. That's what to do. Just check out my air layer real fast. If you have interest in air layers, you know, let me know. Um, if you have interest in anything with my irrigation system, how I did it, how I designed it, leave me a comment below. I, I'd love to look for some ideas on different types of videos that we could do here. One thing I just really want to show you really fast, I, I put a lot of communication up on the boards about uh, Francesco uh, LaRusso, I believe his uh, last name is. He's uh, someone that uh, selling cuttings that I've had some challenges with. And you know, a lot of these on this side, uh, uh, from one way or the other, were brought by, uh, were originally from him at one time. I guess all figs originated from outside the country at one time. But these, this one right here is the Sangue Drago Rosso. Now, I, I talk about of some of the challenges I've had with this variety and why I got it. But a bunch of cuttings all labeled Sangue Drago Rosso. Here's the leaf pattern of this one. You can see one, two, three, a backward swap, four, five, six, seven. It's got one, two, three, four, five, and the back two, seven. And all the leaves are basically that way. These are pretty big leaves. I put my hand there for kind of a perspective. And maybe that's not such a great uh, indicator because you don't know if I'm four foot nothing or if I'm. Uh, six feet tall I guess because you haven't seen the full height of my body but just kind of gives you a little bit of an idea they're all the same leaf pattern now maybe the leaves will the leaves will will change over from time to time don't know but that we have seen spaded leaves that had uh, also three fingered leaves on them before so we know that does happen that uh, there are different variations of leaves but uh, I have the same age tree over here, which is also, hey, Sangue de Drago Rosso. Same package of cuttings, but now we look at these leaves. Looks like three plus the two swept back. And all the leaves are like that. And in fact, not one leaf is the same as the leaf on the other tree. The other thing that was interesting about this tree, and, you know, this is really just a minor point. Uh, we were told that these Ovish trees are common, including the ones that are being sold by one of his uh, resellers of, of cuttings over here. Turns out these figlets have a lot of been, just when they get a little bit bigger, about the same size as uh, the figs behind, like that kind of a size, they end up, um, they end up just dropping. So I don't know if that's uh, you know I'm still learning about the, the I'm still learning about the the wasp and smyrnas and capri figs. We don't have them here in Connecticut, so I don't know if it's a fig that's requiring pollinization and that's when a smyrna typically drops, or if it's just the fact that it's a fig that requires two months, uh, rather two years before it could actually set a fig. I know some of the past of the years, like the one I have on the right here. That she's uh, she's also very known for for dropping dropping her figs, and uh, it needs to be a two year tree or so. So this very well could be the case, but the fig that I, tree that I just showed you, the Sangue de Drago Rosso, did not have that problem yet of dropping figs. So the signs of them dropping say that these are two different types of trees. Now I don't know if Larusso is just making a lot of mistakes. He's uh, getting older, and there's some challenges. Or if he's just outright fraudulent. But I can tell you, a lot of members that I'm speaking to behind the scenes are having problems and I'm urging them to come public. It's, it's important. You know, the challenge that we have with people that sell things that are inappropriate is, if I buy something that, that's the wrong type of uh, uh, cutting or the cutting doesn't turn out to be what it is, or the fig is terrible, but I paid a lot of money for that cutting, we find what people are doing is not saying anything because they want to be able to resell the tree and make some money, make their money back, or perhaps have something that's gonna generate a positive income, not just a break-even income. And once they start talking bad about it, it devalues their tree. The problem is that propagates bad trees. And what is the purpose of that? We're, 
We're in a hobby to strengthen the community and unite together. And as I said in the past, all that evil needs to triumph is for a good person to do nothing. And by not speaking up and saying, hey, this fig is bad. Don't, do not buy this tree. I do not recommend this tree. We're just propagating bad stuff. Lots of different figs, but one baby I really wanted to show you over here. Uh, before I get to that one, I just wanted to show you. A couple people have been asking about cuttings of my Prigiotta Ramada, or if I could air layer them. This is my Prigiotta Ramada. She's not very big. She's the only tree, well, one of my only trees was one of my few trees that I had a really hard time over winter. Nearly lost her, finally we're getting her back. Not big enough for an air layer, but when it is, I promise you, you know who you are. I've got one for you as soon as she's ready. Here's my Mikinata Ramada. Again, small, tip is broken. That was my fault, an accident. And a bunch of other. This right here, this is an Alcabasa. This came back from, from Portugal. Um, I tell a story about, about the Alcabasa and what my driver told me about how people uh, survive in some of these poor areas, how land is really, really, really small for them that live in these really poor areas and they need to grow food to sustain life, uh, and to basically sustain themselves. And one of their crops is, uh, is a fig tree. Each of the, the, the families in a community grow their own fig tree and then they share figs with each other. Also, maybe I'll grow a lot of cabbage. The person right next door will grow another type of crop, and then we'll share crops. Uh, this uh, family had this fig tree growing in it. I do not know if it is a uh, Smyrna or if it's a uh, common San Pedro. I believe there were there were figs. Um, there were some brevas on the on their mother tree. So. Uh, I, I'm hoping that this is a, either a common or a San Pedro. I'm not 100% confident, but we'll see. If this turns out to become a common, we will see this one hopefully out in the market if it's any good. And I'll be more than happy to share with you guys more about this big event. Okay, so, I like Hada, Holy Dom Gris. Okay, my Figo Preto coming along, my I-258. This is another one I almost lost. And out of nowhere, it just grew into a big bush form. But the original mother tree was basically chopped off. You can kind of see the node right there because it just wasn't looking good. And same thing with that one right there. And lo and behold, all these shoots just started popping up about a month later. But this is my San Miguel Roxo. Azores Dark and San Miguel Roxo are the same fig. Supposedly the San Miguel Roxo came from Azor Island. Somehow it was accidentally mislabeled as Azor Dark, but uh, everyone who has both cuts them open. They're exactly the same leaf pattern, fig, everything. But that being said, look how prolific this tree is. She's got figs everywhere, everywhere. And they're all ripening. This was one of my favorite figs last year. Definitely in the top 10 everywhere everywhere and everywhere and I got one right there that I think she's just not growing right oh, but yeah it's still firm look at that even on these little pieces these little suckers which I'm air layering off for you guys you can see right there I air layer the suckers off but I'm gonna leave the top on because I'm liking how she's growing I may 
take this one off as a cutting and sell this one as a cutting in the winter to force uh, more growth out of the top of the tree straight up and create more branching around this section of the tree but very very prolific tree I mean if there's new wood it's got figs on it San Miguel rocks are definitely a, a grabber Scott's black so these pots I just stopped getting pots I just going to Home Depot and having them order these sips and each sip was 10 bucks and it just started to become so expensive that I just said hey look you know Garner can you please help me out um, any pots you can get so bam all of a sudden he started bringing these large black pots and I started putting them up in here so I put these uh, I put these trees in these pots over here and this is just some of my stuff that I've gotten that are either just out of curiosity that I don't think I'm gonna keep like I have a desert king back here I think it's over on this side right here it's my desert king I don't think I'm gonna keep this one it's just um, I haven't had very good results with her and uh, this year I mean I, I have some nice figs on it we'll see oh, that's there is this okay we'll see how, how she turns out but probably not gonna keep it And uh, that's, uh, that's some of the stuff there. Uh, other things I have here are some of my new ones I just recently got potted. This is a new one from Mario, uh, the Squiglia. Don't know anything about it, but once I get figs, you guys will know something about it. A Tacoma Violet. And this is just, they're all on this drip, but I did this drip so sloppy. Because I just don't have the room for all these figs. And you know, someone mentioned on the message boards that you don't need to get every fig. Aha. Uh -huh. Us with OCD that are fig collectors must get every fig. So I'm praying that we find a lot more things that are the same with different names so I can kind of thin the herd. So uh, this is a great tree right here. I just want to show you about. Uh, this is my Detail Nero. Um, this is a, a black Cadota essentially. And the black Cadota fig was really, really good. This actually is also from Mario. And this fig. Um, just splits so easy it is a huge splitter I mean, it's not that it's that I had heavy rain or I've been watering it heavy it's just they they just they split so easy and I have so many figs that are not split where is it there it is I mean they're all over the place that are not split but just as many that are not split are split right I have two at this note I have this one over here and then right over here that you start to see another one that's not that's split and then these over here no no these are split those aren't split but yet right here another split one and it's almost as if they're still ripening I don't, know, I don't think it is but it, it just they just seem like they are and the flowers are, are really starting to come out after it splits so basically it splits open and then we all know that the fig is an inverted flower, but the flowers just seem to continue growing. So I left it on there. I'm kind of curious what it's going to look like when, uh, in another few weeks, see if those flowers become more profound. It's my raspberry latte. This is uh, my, my mother plant is uh, from Brian M. Brian, thank you so much. This is such a great fig, and I'm so happy you recommended it. Your tree is beautiful. It grew so healthy. It's just lovely. If you guys are looking to get one, I, I recommend this strain. Uh, again, I got mine from Brian, so I'm sure he has it aside from me. If you see him having it, again, look how prolific it is. Just figs up and down. Every branch in there has figs. fertilizer system. Of course I have my backflow preventer on there. Just pop open the, this roof as you can see this is what I built here. This is my uh, manifold that goes into my three valves that have the solenoids on top. 
and that goes into my um, electronic system. All right, shut that. And the wiring goes in. I have my power line as well as my low voltage line separate as per code. Okay, so this is uh, the brains of the irrigation system. Basically, this is what controls the uh, solenoids to tell the valves to open or shut. It's hooked up to NOAA satellite feeds uh, so it can get real-time data of where or how much rain has fallen in my area. I think it's a 15-mile radius of uh, the controller. Love it. It's, uh, I sent in there all the scientific data about the, my soil and my pots. It knows exactly how much the water. It's done pretty well. I do take it off from time to time and manually adjust especially when I'm fertilizing and I want to control the types of fertilizer and the type of hydration. And of course, when the figs start to ripen, I want to concentrate the flavor of those figs, so I want to reduce the water. So I'm going to change the settings on this great device. You can see a lot of all these new cuttings that are potted. Just, I know, completely out of control. But I've got some crows here. That's a new find from Fury. And I'm really excited to see how those turn out. And then I just have a bunch of miscellaneous ones over here. I have a rod grod, marabout, sucret's an interesting one. There's a fig called Col Noir out there. I believe marketed under theory. And Col Noir is supposed to mean black ass. And they, they call that because the ass of the fig, the bottom of the fig itself is all black and the top is kind of tan. And the sucret's supposed to have exactly the same fig. So I got this one. I want to compare this to the Col Noir that I have growing and maybe in a year I'll, I'll be able to know, hey, can I reduce my trees by one? So that'd be nice. This Sangue de Drago Rosso, we talked a little bit about there. I'm going to find out which one this is or if it's the same, if, or if it's a new variety of Sangue de Drago Rosso. But this one is a, it's an interesting cutting. This cutting took about a month for it to root and then literally six months after I uppot it, it just started to put it out of shoot, I want to say, two days ago, and it's growing so fast. So uh, it's it's interesting the the profile. I've never had a tree take six months to six months to leave out. By then, I, I usually kill it or throw it away, uh, just like these. These are some of my ones that didn't make it. Early violet, some capris. There's a dulce de leche. This is a great find by Sacred Origin on our figs and Figbit. I should figbit.com. If you guys aren't familiar with it and you found my video somewhere else, check it out, www.figbit.com. It's a great legitimate place to buy figs. This is a Green Bronx grandfather. Very slow grower, but the figs are supposed to be exactly like cotton candy mixed with fig. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this one. Again, figbit.com. Um, it's a great place that we try to weed out a legitimate sellers. We have a little more control than eBay. eBay uh, allows for scammers to go on that they know because they're making money with these scammers. And uh, the police don't want to get involved. There's one person out there that uh, goes by the name Peony77, I believe. And die username one. Complete scam artist. They have over this one person has over, I think, 10 or 15 accounts. She keeps every account under $20,000 because at $20,000, the uh, eBay will issue a 1099 and you have to file taxes. So she's purposely uh, committing tax evasion. However, the IRS doesn't seem to want to, to prosecute and eBay doesn't really care. They buy hundreds of varieties of various miscellaneous cuttings and they just sell them all as pretty much black Madeira. Black Madeira cuttings go for anywhere between, I think she's selling anywhere between $35 to $50. But unfortunately, when you get them, they're either dead, they're not even fig trees, fig cuttings. And if they are fig cuttings, you won't know for another year or two. Until by that time, when you get the fruit and you grow out the leaf, then what are you going to do? You're going to go to eBay and say, eBay, two years ago I bought something? eBay's going to say you're outside your time. What do you want us to do about it? But these are, these are what you're seeing right now. On a, on a more positive note, a lot of these cutting, a lot of these uh, trees, these are Sacred Origins. Um, Sacred Origin brought these to my attention. These are the cars where I have the uh, Shasta peach and the honey plum. 
great figs. I'm, I'm really enjoying these, and you know, I just want to show you some of my collection. These are the last of them. If you're interested in picking one of these up, they are on figbit.com. Uh, enough of my self promotion. Just wanted to kind of show you some of my collection. These are the ones that are on now. This is my Panche, and I'm sure whoever wins this one should be happy about it. This one was just growing so quickly, and I had to cut the chip off because it's just gonna get too big to, to root. And in about a week already, it's not only got a new bud, but it's got those right there that are growing too. Get one leaf. Look how pretty she is. So vibrated. So those colors. filter because I was going tight sun but now that I'm in the shade I wonder if I can just remove this filter all right guys sun filters off let's see if we can get some better color here focus on this all right you can see the, the, the vibrated wood there it's, uh, Beautiful, beautiful tree. All right, guys. So uh, that's uh, pretty much the end of my video. I just wanted to say thank you very much for joining. If you made it this far, um, I have so much to say about each of these varieties that come to my mind throughout it. I just try to keep the video a little bit on the shorter end. You don't need to hear half an hour, 45 minutes of my just ramblings of every single tree. If there are specific varieties that you have interest in, I'd be more than happy to discuss it. When the figs start to ripen, I'm going to try to do a some couple of uh, fig ripening videos. I think this will help contrast a little bit from what you see on the northwest from Bin Bin. Uh, ben is is a great great fig guy. Um, love him very much. I'll set up a link if I can figure out how. So you can go check out his website. I believe it's uh, Seattle Figs. Don't hold me to that. I'll look it up and I'll get I'll post that information a little bit further below. Um, other than that, thank you very much for joining. And I can't say enough. If you if you like the video, or uh, I appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, provide some comments, some feedback as to what I could do to do better. Again, this is my very first video. So thank you very much for joining. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're notified to every video that my dad makes.